All right, so this week you are working on Lab 11V, which is fossils, types, preservation, and uses. So in this lab, as per usual, you have some background information. Station one, or the first portion, you're doing types of fossils. So you're looking at whether you are identifying a body fossil or a trace fossil. And these are coming from the PowerPoint that I uploaded. It's called Lab 11V Fossils, and those have all of the fossil um, sample pictures that you're going to be using for stations one and two. So you have this first table to fill out where you're identifying the fossil type, whether it's a body or a trace fossil, and then take your best guess at what the fossil name is. If you're not entirely sure, that's okay. Um, but if you know that it's a bone, write bone. If you know that it's an insect, write an insect. Um, if you know that it's a fish, write a fish. So do your best guess there. And then you have one question down here to um, kind of decipher why you would see more body fossils or trace fossils um, and what they might tell you. Okay, and then station two is also on the PowerPoint. This is where you're going to be looking at um, samples and trying to decide what type they are and what their mode of preservation is. So this was in the PowerPoint, so whether it is a mummification, tar impregnation, recrystallization, that's where you're, what you're gonna put here. And then sample 10N is um, a smilodon. So you're going to look at the picture and basically um, try to figure out what it ate and how you would tell what it ate, things like that. Okay, the next station here is looking at uh, correlating rock units using fossils. So we're gonna look at two stratigraphic columns, or sorry, three stratigraphic columns, and we're going to try to figure out um, how we can correlate them based on the fossils that are there. Okay, so <clears throat> let's look at the next page here. So we have these three stratigraphic columns and you have different fossils in here. So if they have fossils that are similar, we can correlate them, or if they are the same rock type, we can also correlate them. So here we have a camel and a camel, and they're in this same unit that looks like this. So you can probably say that these, the bottoms of these all correlate, and so do the tops. So you're just gonna go through and try to correlate the units. Same thing here, we see similar rock types, so you'd probably correlate that. Now here you have a trilobite in this, it's probably a sandstone rock unit here. You have another sandstone rock unit, but it disappears over here. So what we would do with this unit is we would pinch it out. So we'll say the bottom of this brick looking, which is probably limestone, meets that brick looking limestone. And then the top of this igneous meets the top of that igneous. So it kind of pinches out. Then you would keep it the same over here. So this is correlating the units based on what you see in the rock and what type of rock you're looking at. Okay, then you have a kind of a math question down here. So you're gonna use the geologic time scale on the back. This is the last page here. And um, you're gonna look at where humans first existed and what time that was. So 2.5 million years ago, humans um, showed up. And so we've only been here for 2.5 million and the first cell life showed up 3.8 billion years. So you do the math, it's basically like calculating the percentage of your grade. You have this much over this much. So you would take the per, or sorry, the time that humans were here over the time that life has existed the entire time. And then to calculate a percentage, you multiply that by 100 to get a percent. It should be very, very small. Don't forget, when you're calculating this into your calculator, you need to make sure you put the appropriate amount of zeros. Otherwise, you won't get anywhere close to the right answer. All right, then station four is looking at the geologic time scale. So you're going to use the time scale on the last page here to answer some pretty basic questions, just looking through when things showed up, when we had flowering plants, when did fish evolve, things like that, just to get you kind of acquainted with the geologic time scale. Then we have um, this last portion is looking at biostratigraphy. So one of the most important things about fossils is their ability to tell us when um, a specific rock unit was created. Um, and they can do that if they are a very good, what we call an index fossil. 
So an index fossil is a fossil that lived over a very <coughs> short period of time, but they lived everywhere. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna take each of these species and you're gonna kind of shade how long they lived. And so you're gonna figure out which one would be the best index fossil based on that. So really you're looking for the one that lived over the smallest amount of time. Okay, so whichever one you shade the least amount of time periods for. And then you have some questions based on that. Basically, you're looking at sediments and trying to determine their age based on the species that you have found in those sediments. Okay? And then your geologic time scale is the last page there for reference. Um, so I edited this lab off of your original Lab 11. So your original Lab 11 in your lab manual is virtually the same. You just don't do the making a fossil section um, because that is a hands-on thing that we can't do virtually. So um, this is something that you can print out or you can use the one you already have in your lab manual, write on it, take pictures of it and upload it. Um, or you can type it into the Word document as well. Okay, so again, if you have any questions, feel free to message me, text me, um, send me an email, and I hope you guys are having a good day.